Welcome back to Frankie Off Grid and if you're new here, we're Carissa and Ewan and back in 2020 we moved from North Wales and bought a small plot of land with an old granite stone ruin in central Portugal. This week we've been working on our off-grid water system. As you may have seen in previous videos, we've been struggling a bit with our water pump as we kept getting a hole in the pipe. We're also finding that we are constantly juggling with our electricity as we are completely off-grid and we're slowly building up our solar panels and battery system. So this week we've been working on trying to rely a little less on electricity and to set up our IBC tanks with the plan of using more gravity fed systems. Though we'd like to make our lives here as comfortable and easy as possible, being off grid means adapting and thinking of different ways of doing things rather than just trying to create a home that is as close to an on grid home as possible. Other than working on our water setup, we also watched the Perseids meteor shower. The skies here are incredible at night, but there was something mysterious in the sky, we've still not quite worked out what it was. We're also trying to get back into the garden, which has been a little bit abandoned the last month with the extreme heat we've been facing. And we also check whether our grapes are ready, because wine making season is just around the corner. I might need to hold So it's just gone 11 o'clock and I have the jumper on, the temperature has actually dropped. It says 22 outside, which for us is now really cold, but it's the night of the Perseus meteor shower and we found this tiny bottle of whiskey that we found back in our belongings in Wales and we think it's from when we went to visit Lagavulin, in one of the big whiskey distilleries in Scotland. So now we're having a little dram and sitting outside and watching for shooting stars. We've seen a couple of really bright ones so yeah it's really really nice to be sitting outside in a jumper at this time of year and watch them. So I'll try and set up time lapse and see if I can capture some. So we spent about an hour watching the sky and saw quite a few shooting stars, but just as we were going to bed I noticed a strange collection of lights low in the sky. My camera can only capture the night sky in time lapse mode, so the first few captures are a bit blurry. This collection of lights started quite bright and low to the horizon. At first I thought they looked like slow motion fireworks. The movement of them quite slow as the footage here is sped up due to having to film in time lapse. The collection of lights moved and swerved through the sky and when we looked through binoculars they seemed to be small blinking lights, almost like Christmas lights on the flashing setting. They drifted further up into the sky until they merged and disappeared into the Milky Way overhead over about 30 minutes. After a lot of googling and putting up a short clip on YouTube to see if anybody knew what they were, we still aren't sure. The closest description that I think it could be is that people sometimes release lanterns into the sky with candles, but recently they've been using LED lights, so perhaps it could have been that. There are many explanations from satellites or the tail of a comet, but the strange path that the lights took seems that they were maybe picked up by the wind. Either that or we definitely saw some aliens that night. <laughs> Feel free to leave comments about what you think they could be. It really was something so mysterious and unique to see. So today we're just going to drive up to Covilla. Covilla. That's a diff. Is it closed? <laughs> we just stopped to uh, grab a couple of beers, but the shop is closed. Um, there is the Volta Portugal, which is like a big bike race here. Um, 
that we wanted to go watch and it is coincidentally also Uncle Nick's birthday so yeah we thought we'd take a couple of beers but we'll have to go find another shop we will she's on holiday till the 16th oh not able to use our village shop till the 16th yeah it's not good <laughs> <laughs> Pembloeth Happus? Pembloeth Happus? <laughs> <laughs> Volta a Portugal is the Portuguese equivalent of the Tour de France, a bike race over 10 stages covering the length and width of Portugal. We stumbled across it accidentally last year, getting trapped by the closed roads in Fundau and really enjoyed seeing professional athletes so up close and going at such a speed. The uphill speed of the spot we'd settled in was a little less adrenaline inducing but nonetheless impressive to see the strength and endurance of the races. We also met up with Carlos and Charlotte of the Sunny Sour Dog Project, a fun channel if you wanted to check them out. They have a dog called Biscuit who looks like Diogo's twin. Good morning, I am up early to get some work done on the garden. It has been very abandoned the last month or so and um, yeah, I just really need to put some love into it so that's what I'm going to do today. The greenhouse is an absolute mess, there's lots of dead seedlings in there but there is this. <laughs> this is my uh, sweet potato slips that I would I was growing and I think I should have taken them off so that they could root so I think I'm just gonna plant the whole potato in the ground and see what happens. I did find some slips in the shop so there are some in the ground and they're growing really well they do so well in this climate I'm gonna pop these in the raised beds and see how they go. Yeah. <laughs> the roots on that is why I think I'll just plant the whole potato because that's um going to give them a good start. <laughs> I'm going to just take a couple of these slips off and put them in water and see if they root. You can eat the leaves of the sweet potato plant, they're really delicious and the chickens absolutely love them so I'm going to go give them some of these. <laughs> Virgil, our rooster, is uh, 
slowly settling in, but he's very scared of us still. And uh, the girls do still bully him a bit. Please get in there. Bon dia! Lovely day today. It's actually quite cool. Well, not only the fact that it's 8 o'clock in the morning, but it's a much cooler few days. It's been like 34, 35, so not too bad. I was walking around yesterday and trying some other grapes, if you can see them behind me there. And they're quite sweet, so I'm now kind of worried that harvest time has actually snuck up on us. It's a good two weeks earlier than we did it last year. but. It's not beyond possibility that we need to harvest sooner. So one way you can tell is by collecting like a whole vineyard sample. So that's what I'm going to do today is take random bunches of vines dotted across the land from lower down ones to higher up ones and then make a sort of grape juice out of them and then test them with a hydrometer to see what the, the sugar level is and depending on what that sugar level is, that should tell us how soon we need to harvest. So fingers crossed, <laughs> we have at least a few more days. Because I wasn't expecting to do it now, so I haven't really prepped for it. But it won't take long, so we will see. Right, I need to go and pick some grapes. makeshift bucket. I think we might have had a bit of a false alarm because there's a couple of not fully red ones. Oh, do you go? Do you go? <laughs> not, well, I just chucked them on the floor without thinking. They do say grapes are bad for dogs, but I've seen a, a Staffordshire Bull Terrier grabbing whole bunches of grapes off vines and eating them like there's no tomorrow and apparently it's done it for years and years I'm not saying to feed your dog grapes but there are exceptions right we've probably got too many grapes but it's better to have a good sample Right, so we've got a. Is this a conical flask? What's this flask thing called? It's not a conical flask, is it? Whatever this is called, leave it in the comments. I'm trying to think back to like school. Yeah, yeah. Is that juice? 
nice rosé colour. This is a hydrometer which measures the density of liquids, I think. I'm going to have to go to a table. Right, so good news is we've got a few more days. Currently the sugar content or the brick scale is showing 17 and we want about 20. Just need to get prepping now really. Need to get the barn clean, get the buckets clean, get the tank clean. Priming water pumps and getting water pumps to work is honestly a bane of our lives right now. Everyone we've got is annoying. We're going to get the well by the house cleaned in a few weeks time, hopefully. So hopefully that'll start making stuff easier. In the meantime, I'm going to pick some pears.
another water pump drama. So as we have an abundance of these pipes, as this is the pipe that got the hole in for our other water pump, we've tried to fix the hole and it doesn't withstand the pressure of the balloon pump, but it might work okay on this. It's quite a different attachment at this end, but I thought I might as well try. <laughs> uh, we've only got another hour until the deadline for using machinery, so um, yeah, give it a go and then if not, try something else. <laughs> Well, that worked. So the pump's just cut out now, um, I don't know if it just overheated or something, but um, anyway, we did get it working. Uh, if you are going to buy a water pump, I would not recommend these petrol powered motor pumps, we've had nothing but trouble with it. The electrical ones are much better and if you just have like a power bank like one of our Beretti's, the wattage I think is like 600 watts max. Maybe it goes up to 800, so if you have something to power it, that is so much better. And the, they're much cheaper, the water pumps, because I think this was like 120 euros, and then you're paying for the fuel. So, yeah, definitely <laughs> lesson learned. I would never buy one again. I hate that pump, and it's so loud. The, I guess you could also use a generator with the um, electrical pumps, that's what we first did. Anyway, all these frustrations with water pumps, I am learning a lot about them and like how water works and stuff so I guess that's useful because as you may have noticed I'm pretty clueless when it comes to all this stuff and yeah each each thing that goes wrong is a chance to learn something new. I'll come and show you the balloon pump that we have by the house and give you an update on how we're getting on with that. Oh yeah. Okay it's tight space in here. <laughs> uh, starting to get warm as well. If you're not aware of our pump dilemma this pipe we've bought, this is the third one now. We had loads of really good suggestions of how to fit the hole in the other ones, um, but in the end we just decided to buy one and put it in this uh, drain pipe to try and protect it, and then we're gonna tape up along here. Once we had attached this, we, li we lifted the pump up on a few pallets to make there be less of a bend in this because I think that causes it to wear and get holes in. But it still wasn't working when we put this new one on. It was like, it was usable, but the pump wasn't turning off once it built up its pressure. It, it draws like 500 watts. I feel like this is a really bad filming angle, hang on. Okay, um, yeah, it pulls 500 watts. Really good at vlogging today. So we can't just, leave it doing that because we only have a limited amount of electricity i mean you wouldn't even if you were on the grid because it would cost you an absolute fortune so we could use it enough to like have a shower and water the garden but then we have to turn off the pump which isn't ideal because we want to have it on demand have the tap in the kitchen always available and luckily uncle nick uh, popped around the other day and he showed us um i'll just see if i can show you now inside here i'm not going to be able to get it off am i <laughs> No, I'm not going to take it off, I'm not going to risk it, but there's, in here, there's a thing called a contact and it turns the pump off once it's re reached that pressure and that wasn't flicking itself off. So he managed to reduce the pressure that it needs to get to to shut off and uh, we sprayed in some WD-40, trusty 
thing if anything's not moving that should be use that <laughs> yeah and that got that working again but i think because we've had so many issues we've had a lot of drips on here and you noticed a tiny bit of rust so i think there's been a little bit of water getting in here so i'm gonna stick some electrical tape just on the top here now and hopefully keep an eye on it and we just turn it off at night to make sure it's not accidentally doing that but so far so far we're all good so yeah that should just protect all that a little bit more so this is the part of summer that is the most frustrating is like there's so much to do that I would love to be getting on with but it's just getting hot already it's 10 o'clock and our thermometer saying it's 36 degrees in the sun so I just don't want to stress my body under that I'm already sweating I've got my sun cream on summer will be over in a month and then we can crack on with everything and just try and get these little bits done each morning but oh, I really hate it I just want to be doing everything but you can't and yeah I was thinking about it yesterday like we've moved here so that we could afford to have this piece of land because obviously in like the UK it's just impossible to buy one and a half acres in a budget that we could afford and our payment for that in return are these hot summers which is why the land is cheap I guess because it's quite a difficult place to live at times. To be honest it's only max the three months of the summer that's difficult and the rest of the time it's brilliant so <laughs> it's fine but it is a challenge and I'm already sweating a lot at 10 o'clock and now it's not gonna get cool till I think today it's not going to be as brutal so I think by six o'clock it'll be cooler again. Only one month to go and just got to be patient. This video is sponsored by Zamat, a professional sleep pillow brand. As you may have seen from our videos it gets very hot here in central Portugal and one of the toughest things is trying to sleep in the heat so we were pretty excited to try Zamat's Chilling Q pillow. Zamat firstly worked on developing an ergonomic pillow that integrated sleep science and cervical therapy with the aim of helping to alleviate chronic neck and back pain, which is why the shape of them is a bit unconventional. I was intrigued and a little sceptical about a cooling pillow, but were willing to try anything to keep a little cooler at night, especially as our cabin has at times been 35 degrees Celsius at midnight, not the optimal temperature for sleeping. We've both been pleasantly surprised at the coolness of the pillow fabric compared to our usual pillowcases. It's made from milk silk and is noticeably cooler to the touch when all other fabrics feel warm. There is also a circular foam-like cooling pad below the fabric and a buttonhole at the centre that pulls the fabric inwards, creating a small airspace and a hole that cradles your head for better comfort. We've had these pillows for about a month now as we wanted to test them out before reviewing them. We actually took them back to Wales with us, not for their cooling effect but because we find the shape really comfortable to sleep with. Yuan absolutely loves his and doesn't use any other pillow whereas I find I love using it for a siesta where the cool fabric is lovely for an hour but for a whole night's sleep I find I prefer a bamboo pillowcase. The shape of the pillow feels like it's really good for my sleeping position though. So if you're also intrigued like we were then you'll find a link in our description and you can use our code FRANKIE15 to get 15% off. Shipping is free within the US and they offer a 100 night trial, after which if you find it's not helping you sleep more cooler and more comfortable, they'll give you a full refund, so there's not much to lose. I really hope if you do purchase one that you find them as comfortable as we have. Just going to trial sun drying a few of these figs. So this one had been sitting on the side in the kitchen for a couple of days and there is a worm or something in here which is a bit off-putting <laughs> don't really know what's best to do with them now whether they might all end up with worms in I have heard of boiling the figs before you sun dry them to kill anything 
I always find a really good thing to do is to ask you guys because you're all wise and full of experience what should we do with these figs? I'm kind of a little bit grossed out because I've been picking them off the tree and eating them as well and I don't know if they've all got these they kind of look like fly maggots like tiny ones in them yeah not great <laughs> yeah whether I should pick some and boil them and then sun dry them I'm gonna take these for the chickens and not risk us having them. They look amazing, but I'm very off put now. <laughs> chuk, chuk, chuks. Here you come in, bitch. Your t shirts matching your lunch. Mm -hmm. What we're we making? Roasted tomato and basil soup. Nice. Yep. Yeah. We have lots of tomatoes again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stick. Can we cut those bits off? Yeah, this just blossom ends rot. Let's find the rest of the tomato. Here we have some caramelised red onion, which always adds a nice touch to a, to a tomato soup. Ten out of ten. just want to say a big thank you for watching we really enjoy making these videos and they give a little bit more structure to our week especially in the summer when it's kind of hard to uh, have a sense of purpose <laughs> to your day when you are stuck with the heat so yeah thank you for sticking with us I know they're perhaps a little less exciting as we're not really working on any big projects at the moment um, but we just like taking you along and you know documenting what it's truly like to live here so yeah big huge thank you for watching and for all of your support we hugely appreciate it and um, yeah we'll we'll see you next week take care